co-host Rob Pye. Hello. Say hello Rob Pye. <laughs> um, we are absolutely thrilled, delighted and having far too much fun to welcome back uh, Charlotte Kinlock who is was one of our very very first uh, young leaders uh, on, our, on our young leaders initiative uh, to tell us uh, some more about her story. Uh, I'm sure she will uh, give a good account of who she is uh, but since working with us uh, having graduated from our young leaders program and then spending uh, I think it's at least 12 months uh working with us uh chose to leave us we all cried a lot but went off on a, a magnificent journey which uh we, we may well unpick somewhat uh the other side of the world and now finds herself in uh vancouver in canada so uh, without further ado i'm going to ask charlotte to introduce herself and tell us a bit about yourself who you are and uh what you are about sure um so i um, I'm from Scotland. I've been living, or I was living in Glasgow for the last six years. Um, I went to Glasgow University and finished with a degree in business management and philosophy. Um, I graduated in 2020, so like we're right at the start of everything going terribly with COVID. Um, and applied for like I countless jobs. Like I don't, I don't even know how many. And then um, I eventually managed to get a job working for a financial services firm in kind of like a telesales role. Um, and yeah, we've heard the story before, but it was a job that basically just really tore my mental health apart. And just like the culture was very like, just this attitude of the more you're like pushing yourself to your breaking point, the kind of more committed you must be to your job and kind of attitude. And I found that really tough. So. I ended up leaving that job after like three months, um, which was a difficult decision because I felt very lucky to even have a job during COVID when so many people were unemployed. But it was definitely like the right thing to do because I couldn't have carried on for much longer, I don't think. Um, and then I was on universal credit for, I can't remember, a few months um, before I found Ethos through that. Um, so my work coach sent me the young leader's job and I, yeah, I applied for it straight away. And then I think like within a few days I had started at Ethos, <laughs> um, yeah, very quick conversation and straight into it. And then I guess, um, I initially got involved with like the people operations So let, let's in, in quick uh, interruption, Charlotte, cause I don't, I don't think we've talked about the Young Leaders Programme. You you obviously know, but people uh, yeah. from our enormous fan base. Um, so we, over that two-year period, recruited 65 young people. Charlotte was one of the first. And um, we used the value exchange work system for the young people to tell us who they were and why they would like employment. But then when they joined and we paid them a... a, a a minimum wage, a basic income, there's a six month work experience program. They built their own job essentially. So because Charlotte was on the first, she actually helped build the program. The program. <laughs> yeah. Very fun. Um so yeah. I think actually you were interviewed on Friday at about four o'clock and you started Tuesday or something <laughs> like that, didn't you? I think that's yeah. actually what, I, what I recall. I remember getting the call from Rob going, I've got a really good one. <laughs> <laughs> Be there at four. And that was, that was, that was, oh, that was yeah. not that people use telephones anymore, but anyway, that's the telephone. <laughs> so um <laughs> so unprofessional. <laughs> like, you know when you like come across a job and it seems like too good to be true. Like, I think everyone's had that situation made probably when they're young, where they get like slightly pulled into a pyramid scheme before they realize it's a pyramid. Like, I have done that. Like, I have gone to the point where I've gone for the interview. And like, when I first found Ethos, I think like there was a while where I was like, is this too good to be true? Like, at what point am I going to really, I'm, I, I'm going to feel like this is like not as good as it seems. But it, it was. And yeah, I like it was amazing to have the opportunity to like carve out my own work and my own role like depending on what I was like 
good at and also what I found like motivating and fun mm -hmm. like that was yeah that was such a cool experience yeah so what what okay. did you what what were some of the things you did in ethos what did you learn what did you do what were you involved in can you remember far that far back now <laughs> I remember yeah. like... I mean so many things like so yeah I originally got involved in the people operation side of things which I remember one of the first things I did was um, help with our kind of onboarding process for young leaders and create like onboarding videos and things, um, which was a really good way to just get stuck in. But because it was a pandemic, more. it's like people operations. I mean, I think we had like in about four weeks, about 2000 applications or something stupid. Eh? Just like an enormous. So we had to have a system to, yeah. you know, how, how do we not let, you know, how do we do it honorably? Um, yeah, so, yeah, developing processes like that, and then and then I became Scrum Master. So I guess agile. What on earth does that mean? It's like yeah, terminology yeah. for <laughs> I suppose project management for the Young Leaders Project, um, and I did that for like I feel like I was doing that for like six months or so, um, and I been. learned a lot. Yeah, yeah, something like I learned a lot throughout throughout that process. Like, um, and I think that my what I learned about like project management and working in an agile way and like prioritization and all these things, like I have carried with me so much in work. And like even now, you know, I'm working somewhere else and things, and I'm I'm struggling to not work in that way. Like, which I'm finding very funny. I just want to create my like backlog of things, and yeah, it's it's like hard to like stop myself. Um, and then yeah, after after spending some time as a scrum master, I then was finding that I was like really enjoying doing business development work. Um, I'm working closely with both of you, um, so I ended up kind of transitioning out of the scrum role and into just a full-time full biz dev um, role and that was pretty much me up until the end and I think that was about it was like a, le a year and a half in total including the six months on Kickstarter. And then you did a lot a load of supporting young leaders because it's like you know it was a very big community of yeah. people supporting each other and and it's quite easy because you were mm -hmm. early on board to be seen as um, you know as Chief young leader. Yeah. Chief, <laughs> chief young leader. The go-to lady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was really cool. I think one of the coolest things about young leaders was the fact that everyone was from like such a variety of backgrounds. Like we had people who had like graduated from uni and we had people who had some work experience. We had people who had like no work experience, ha hadn't like had education beyond kind of high school. Um, and yeah, just all different levels of like privilege and, and background. And I think like it was amazing. Like the way everyone came together and there was such a huge sense of support among the young leaders for each other. And yeah, I think that was that was one of the most special things about the project for me. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. as much as you love working with Annabelle and Rob, it, it was that bigger <laughs> community, I think, that it just made it so special. Um yeah, it definitely So did. where where are yeah. we now? We're um so so this big so, decision to yeah. travel then is that is that next yeah i suppose so i had a plan to travel after i finished university um and i had already booked like flights out to brazil for like october 2020 and i had started applying for my canadian visa and then obviously everything got cancelled so two years later i reinvigorated that plan um and i left the uk in October 2022, last year, um, and yeah, flew out. or something, yeah, sort of 17. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Something like that. laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I left then, and then I spent, um, yeah, six months traveling around South America um, and volunteering. Um, on a program called work away which is you like volunteer in exchange for like bed and board basically um 
and then yeah, made my way to Canada. Well, but, but let, let, Canada. Let, whoa, 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 holiday! I want to pause there. I've got some questions. <laughs> <laughs> questions for that because the the, yeah. the idea of value exchanges is this system that kind of you know talks is a change system, change you, change the world, but it it it's about who you are and how you get meaning. Um, you know what 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 your story is very much all about your stories. So I I just I haven't asked you this before. We've had a couple of chats since, but yeah. in the context of value exchange, you know what did you learn about who you are and who the world is? And so you kind of you've got this. We infected you with being the scrum master. But what what about <laughs> what about the thoughts you have whilst traveling in terms of engagement with local people and volunteering and. Just, just tell her because so such much. a fantastic experience. So. Yeah, honestly, so much. And I think before I went traveling, I knew that I wanted, or I was, I hoped that I, those six months would help me kind of figure out like how I wanted to live, you know, later on once I started to like settle somewhere. Um, and I, I found out a lot about myself. Like definitely, throughout the whole time we were sometimes in really rural like environments in the middle of nowhere, doing volunteering, like sleeping in tents, like kind of roughing it quite a lot. And then we also spent a lot of time in cities. And I think like, you know, one of the things I realized was just like how much happier I was when I was out of the city. Um, and like, yeah, I, I really want to live more rural and have I would love to like be able to grow my own food a little bit and like have some outdoor stays. And I know it seems like a small thing, but yeah. I think to like have that realization and be aware of it is like so impactful. It's just it's just brilliant yeah. because you've just mirrored exactly a comment Ben made, you know, on a previous interview, which is, you know, when, when yeah. you're in nature, you know, which if you live rurally, you kind of got a privilege if you've got more green stuff, more forests, more trees and, you know. It, it, it's yeah. a hugely therapeutic thing to be uh, rural. Um, and how do yeah. we bring some of that joy to, to the urban environment? Um, yeah, big yeah. challenge. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And like, even since we've arrived in Canada, uh, like Rao and my partner especially has been like looking into like community garden work and things like that, like in the city. And there's quite a lot of that here. So we've been trying to get involved mm -hmm like yeah some gardening projects and things like that so we can learn how to like grow our own food um and also <laughs> groceries are just insanely expensive here so <laughs> everywhere not just <laughs> everywhere, there yeah. no not just there yeah. um so yeah um yeah I, I feel like i learned a lot and i i um i feel like value exchange you know being exposed and involved in value exchange at ethos has made me just like I go back to it so regularly in my life and think about like, you know, what's making me happy? Like, what do I really want to, what do I really want to be a part of my life? And I think like, just, yeah, having the, the ability to do that is like really special. Cool. Well, so, so that you talked about the rural, would, any reflections on the holiday in terms of people? So uh, indigenous people, city people, volunteering other people you yeah. met was there sort of any reflections on the people side of it yeah i mean we didn't really have the opportunity to get too involved with any like indigenous kind of groups and things but we did do a couple of pro like work away projects where we were sort of living in quite an indigenous way like very community orientated um, like one project we did, we were helping a lady who had started up, started up an eco hotel that was at the top of this mountain in Colombia. And everyone that lived on the mountain was a part of this community. And they kind of came together to decide things like, oh, we need to fix this road, you know, the only road that goes up the mountain. Like, how are we all going to pull together to make sure we've got the resources to do that? You know, and like maybe one family's like just had a baby and they need, you know, some support with that. And the community comes together to like see how we can all, you know, m make that person's life a little bit easier and things. And like that, I think, was quite impactful as well. Like, yeah, just being able to live in a way where, first of all, like, you know, your neighbors, like we don't know our neighbors anymore. And like just having closeness and connection with the people around you. I really want that in my life. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. My son, Sam, when he did his year exchange program to Canada, his universities 
accommodation was run by a cooperative and it did it did manifest oh. in terms of the support and the you know what happened in just it was just his accommodation but it was a cooperative and there was a lot of stuff he was organizing given a budget you know helped to take it so it was kind of the the workers own the organization that own the buildings that mm. provide it and it did provide mm. a lot more it wasn't a collegiate you know university but it it was almost mm. collegiate as in his accommodation was owned by a co-op that made it a community not just a living space mm -hmm. and all of those things yeah were, and you know, I, interesting i know a couple of people or i've met a couple of people here who live in a co-op um, they've been living there for years um, and they get like much cheaper like rent but the responsibility mm. of like maintaining the whole housing situation yeah. like falls on them mm. and yeah. it's like yeah it's Makes so sense. interesting like yeah. they have all these different committees mm. that like kind of deal with different things and mm. sure there's definitely it sounds like there's definitely some like difficult things that come from that um because it's always hard to you know, you've got a big group of people with different priorities and that you've all got to agree on like how to go about things. It's never as no. straightforward as it might seem, but I no. do think it's like a better way to live potentially. Yeah, when I when I lived in Sweden, we we lived in a, you know, a, a block, of, not a block of flats. It sounds very unglamorous, but it was an old a block, block of flats. It, it, was a... it wasn't converted. It was a block <laughs> of flats, basically, but it was an old block of flats. There wasn't a high rise. It was, you know, but um but but that, that that in Sweden is always set up as a housing association, effectively. So you buy the you buy the percentage of the building that you mm -hmm. live in, but you then have you know every six ten weeks we had to clean the floor in the communal areas. You know this was a responsibility that we held for being part of the collective. So it was a, it's an interesting way of you know. But but you're right. I mean you yeah. then you know you don't always get on with your neighbours even if you know who they are. I mean we yeah. have no issues, but but you know it is it's, it's a people, challenge. People, isn't it? It's yeah. people. People. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to let you move to Canada now, Charlotte, if you if you want. Okay. To. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Canada. Um, yeah, been here for just over two months, um, <laughs> which is crazy. It feels like. In a way, it feels like much longer, but I think it's partly just because we've been away from home for so long now. Um, and yeah, we've managed to find jobs and an apartment, um, which is which has been very lucky because it's very hard to um, get a lease here without any Canadian paperwork. But a very kind property manager took pity on us and gave us a shot so um, wow. yeah, Fantastic. So we, were, we were very lucky uh, but yeah it's going well and tell us about, tell us about the, well, <laughs> tell us about your work what do you what it do you do who are you working yeah. for and, yeah. so um, i am working let's give a plug for um, your organization so that you can share it with your community whoop, and, whoop, whoop. yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> so i'm working for an organization called next gen men um, I am their new community project coordinator and the vision of Next Gen Men is to create a world where boys and men feel less pain and cause less harm. So it's about things like gender-based violence prevention and gender equity and fundamentally and, and predominantly engaging men and boys in like issues like this um, and um, you know education as well and helping people understand the ways in which like patriarchal issues affect everyone and it's not something that's like about women or you know about men it's about it's something that is about all of us and we all need to be on the same page to like create any kind of meaningful change um so yeah so i'm coordinating a new project called pathways which is um federally funded for three years and it is a project to create a community of um kind of industry leaders we're hoping to engage leaders in male dominated industries so things like natural resources like oil and gas energy fishing forestry tech sports um these kinds of things and we're trying to find the people who kind of have some motivation to do this work they care about it but they just don't know where to start mm. and i think that's so many of us because it is it's really hard and i think it's quite common to, you know, have a fear of like not being educated enough, not saying the right thing and, and those kinds of things. So we're trying to bridge a gap between people who have been 
in this sector and doing this work for a really long time and the people that are just you know don't do this as their full-time job but are in some kind of position of leadership or not um, and want to engage the people around yeah in fact i thought of you the other day we were doing a value exchange and somebody had written a booklet and it you know he he was quite personally moved being a, a man of the issues that men can have in outing mental health issues and he wanted to just not yeah. let it stop at a booklet but he was looking for you know how can i i don't i don't want to be a famous publisher or you know whatever but i would like to help people um men boys talk more about a lot of the stigma associated with you know mental health mm -hmm. issues that are experienced equally i'm sure by men and women mm -hmm. alike but um yeah i thought oh, mm -hmm. there's probably a dot there but it's a shame you're in canada can, and... can i sorry annabelle mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I wanted I wanted to ask. So, so who who and where do, do the people that you work with? Where where are they situated in society? Is there any specific, or is it anybody and everybody? Is it Canada? I mean, is really, it... is <laughs> mainly is anybody and everybody really. I mean, if if you have an interest and you're moved, then like come come on over. You know, any anyone. Um, link link and, link in the know? link in the web page. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, predominantly across Canada at the moment, but I am some work like across the states as well. Um, yeah, but predominantly Canada. Yeah. Well, I mean, it... and how does it manifest itself? Sorry, I'm just interested in how it works. What, what you know, when you run a pro, I mean, I hear what you're talking about, and you're talking about pathways, and you're talking about industry. But I'm um, with this. Is it all going to the... be online? Will it be the... real events, or are you thinking all online? <laughs> no, the, the pathways. That's project... not what I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Can we come over, you know. Um... <laughs> So our organization is online. So we're a distributed team all the way like across Canada. Although funnily enough, the CEO and founder of the organization happens to live two doors down from me, um, <laughs> which is very fun. <laughs> um, and Annabelle, what was your question? How does it manifest? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just, I'm just, I'm interested. In who, who is, who's the, you know, who are you trying to help? Who's the audience? Where do you oh. find your audience? You yeah, know, or yeah. your, or your, I, you know, beneficiaries or whatever the word is, but the people that, you're you know, helping. Uh, uh, you're helping. Yeah, that's the word. So um, Next Gen Men kind of works across three areas. They are community, youth and workplaces. So yeah. okay. within, so the Pathways Project kind of falls within community. And um, that's like my domain. Um, mm -hmm. And then within youth, like we, we work with schools, we have, um, like e-learning courses for teachers to feel better equipped to talk to young boys, especially with things like Andrew Tate, which is causing a huge problem and a lot of concern for for teachers. Um, so you know we have we have a course about you know how to handle conversations around Andrew Tate in school because that's really difficult and new. Yeah. Um, so things like that, and we also go into workplaces and run kind of workshops and sessions with. Um, teams who want to create more equitable workplaces um, and do more more work around gender justice. So yeah, in a nutshell. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I now understand. So I, I, now I think it's my turn to do conscious of the time because I think we we have almost kind of come to the end of Charlotte's story. Um, yeah and. You know, other questions from you, Annabelle, or how can we help? It's always the closing question. How can we help? How can people help? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think just like sharing what we are doing, you know, keeping an eye on our social media and things like that. Um, and you know, the Pathways Project is it's sort of been going on for for a year, but it's really getting to a point now where we're we're doing things that are public. Um, so we're running webinars for, um, that are targeted. Each one is targeted towards a different industry. So we've done the natural resources one, um, and the next one that will be coming up in September is targeted towards the tech industry. But again, like uh, you know, any anyone is welcome to come along. It's just, um, yeah, we want to we want to focus on those kinds of male dominated industries. Yeah. So we, keep an we eye. We went on. to a 
uh, uh, there was a two day webinar on social value that we we went to. Remember, you remember um, uh, Alicia? No, not Alicia. Um, yes. Who who um, was doing the um, uh, hybrid events? Sardine. Yeah, Alicia. Was it? It was. Yeah. Alicia. Uh, Al yeah. And, and most of them that we've been to, these online events one, where lots of people coming, they, you know, the bigger, big events have really not worked very well. But I think that some of the hosting companies are getting a lot better now in running sessions where they're doing a bit more, you know, hybrid conference where there's a real conference and there's quite a lot of chat and connections and people who were online only were getting a lot out of the connections they were making in the back channel as they were listening to a conference on a stage or whatever. And in the early days of that, you know, it was, it, I mean, people have ideas of sort of, I don't know, going to this virtual Minecraft like village and walking around while something's happening in real life. And it, it just, you know, experimental, but didn't work. But this, this one, which was fairly straightforward, but just with a chat mm. panel, it, it, seemed to, it seemed to really buzz. But you have to have, That's I think, good. quite a lot of people there. Because you'll always get noisy oh. people. And... Okay, so conscious of the time. <laughs> thank you, Charlotte, for being with us today. Um, yeah. It's wonderful to speak. Well, undoubtedly, we'll speak again uh, in the near future. But uh, thank you so much for your All time. Right. We'll say goodbye Cheers. now. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.